Hello, uh, this is week number three of the Introduction to Computer Science course. Uh, <clears throat> today is September 13, Sunday. Recording for tomorrow, Monday, September 14. I am sharing a portion of uh, the Blackboard. Um, by the way, this is recorded by Movabi um, rather than Blackboard uh, Collaborate. Um, <clears throat> On week number three, uh, there is the usual objective stated for you, uh, instructional material. And here is the lesson plan for week number three that you can download, which I'll share with you uh, shortly. There is another, uh, so this uh, lecture video uh, will be, re uh, link will be placed right here afterwards. There is a binary worksheet, uh, PDF edition that I posted up for you. And then there are a few other one, uh, ones. And then there are four assignments for this week. Uh, textbook assignment. <clears throat> Let me kind of go over there. There is a uh, brief textbook assignment. There are two Zybook uh, chapters assigned for you, Chapter 4 and Chapter 5. And then there is a grade calculator uh, lab program that I'm assigning. I am sharing with you the lesson plan from the uh, the Blackboard. Let me go over that uh, with you uh, briefly. Um, again, this is week number three. Um, and maybe one administrative note and then goals for this week. Uh, then I'll go over the assignments. And then I'll briefly uh, go over the lecture material for today or this week. Um, from the previous uh, discussion posting. Um, there was one uh, really nice uh, sharing of the uh, Python programming tutorial website that um, one of the students uh, shared. So I want to share that with you. So if you go to this particular program, um, program is com Python programming. This is really uh, handy and I think it's useful for uh, beginners. And so you can take a look at it. There is a bunch of things that uh, may be useful for you um, and uh, like the statements and comments variables and the data types and kind of goes through the whole thing but uh, it's also nice to be able to see some examples posted here so here is a hello world how to add two numbers and if you click on them um, it actually gives you the code on how to do it it uh, has some comments on how uh, why it's doing what it's doing Um, I didn't try this online compiler, but I think it comes with the uh, compiler that you can uh, type and then just click on the run and then it'll post on whatever the output is. So this is kind of all in one that you could use for most of the um, time of this class. I think the only issue would be the uh, 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 file handling, but uh, we'll get to do it when we get there. But anyway, so that's what that's all about. Goals for this week is to uh, understand uh, data, um, a little bit more about the data from the textbook, and then understand what branching is. Uh, other programming languages would simply call it if and then statement. And then also understand the idea of looping. Uh, why we want to use a looping mechanism, what looping mechanisms there are. Um, so those are the goals for this week. Um, as I mentioned, in terms of the assignments, I'll go over them briefly here with you. So in terms of a textbook assignment, uh, there are a few things that <clears throat> I'd like you to do. Um, I think the first one actually is do the binary uh, worksheet. So I'm going to put that out. So... <clears throat> I go over to the here. Uh, here's a binary worksheet questions that I posted up. And this is a, a worksheet that I posted. Um, I'd like you to do the first six. Actually, I'm going to do just, I'm going to do the first two uh, uh, here uh, now. And then you just need to do the other four. Okay, you can do the other ones too, but uh, once you do a couple of these, I'm sure, uh, you know, they're pretty much the same. So I copied 
the problem here for you to follow. So the first one is to add these two binary numbers. Um, so when you want to add these two binary numbers, you simply add one column at a time from right to left. And then if there is a carryover, you put one on to the left. So when you add a 0 and a 1, just simply 1, right? So all these 1, 0 is a 1, 1, 0 is a 1, 1 plus a 0 is still 1. But here, when you add 1 to 1, it becomes 2, right? But there is no 2 in binary. 2 in binary is 1, 0. So you put a 0 here in the carry of 1. So the answer is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, here is the subtraction. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, uh, one 0, 0, 0, 1. Well, we do it from the right to left also. But we cannot take away 1 from 0. So you have to borrow from here. But this doesn't have anything, so we keep on going until we find 1. And once you borrow this guy over here, it's actually you're borrowing 2 into this uh, because it's binary, right? But we're not done here, too. We've got to give 1 to the next one. So we have 1 here left, and we're going to borrow 1 here. Uh, but it's 2 over here. Uh, but we're not done with the 2 because we need to... Uh, land one over here. So when this one comes over here, it is a 2. So 2 minus 1 will give you 1. And then 1 uh, minus 0 is a 1. 1 minus a 0 is also 1. And this guy is, is a 0 because we gave that to here. So 0 minus 0 it will be 0. And then 1 minus 1 will be 0. So the answer is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, you should put 0, 0 here because, you know, we are using those bits. Uh, so do the other ones, um, the other four, and um, I think I gave you binary uh, converters and stuff like that last time, so you can use this uh, or that to uh, confirm your answer. Um, the other portion of the homework, let's see here is to write your name in ASCII code. Uh, first letter of your first name should be a capital and and the, and the capital form from ASCII code uh, should be should be given or represented. Rest of your first name should be in lowercase. Okay. Well, what, what am I talking about? What is ASCII code in the first place? Well, here is a ASCII code table. I think I have, already have it here. So this is the ASCII code. ASCII code is uh, says stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Uh, but basically, he, uh, this table shows you a list of all uh, basic uh, codes that we, we have and that, and that we use uh, to transmit information uh, in binary. Of course, it is given not only in binary, uh, or it's not actually given in binary, but it is given in uh, oct, hex, and, and decimal, right? And we can always convert from the hex into binary. But anyway, so these are the characters that we need to represent in binary. So some of the here are some special characters, uh, functions and characters here, and numbers, operators. But here's the uh, capital letters uh, that we use, and here's the lower letters. So if your name is, let's say, Bob, Okay, and let's say capital B, then you come over here, look for the capital B, and here it is, right? Uh, so capital B is a decimal 66, but more commonly, we will represent this capital B with a hexadecimal of 4, 2. So you would write four two for B. And then O is a small O, so you come over here, look at the small O, and it'll be 6F, right? And then B, uh, at the end of Bob, is sm uh, lowercase b, so you come over here, look at it, and it's a hex 62. So um, write 42, 6F, 62. So maybe I just should write it right here. So the answer is equal to 42 space 6F 
space six two. Okay, so but and, and you should do that for whatever your first name is. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, in terms of the, uh, I think I also gave. Uh, Maybe I didn't, but maybe I should uh, talk about your textbook. Talks about two's complement, and maybe I'll give the uh, homework next week. Well, maybe maybe not. Uh, but you should kind of know about this, uh, and that is, uh, what in um, binary, uh, even though we mentally um, calculated the subtraction here, uh, this minus that, in hardware. Uh, we there is no such thing as minus so we can only add two numbers um, so this cannot be done in mechanical or ele electronically so the way that we can do this is to manipulate it make this into some other number and then add to this number and while that sounds wild and crazy that's how it is actually done because in uh, binary arithmetic, there's only addition. There's no subtraction or multiplication or division, none of that. Uh, we do it all addition. So in terms of multiplication, we just add multiple times, and uh, division becomes a little hairy, but whatever. Uh, so we need to be able to know how to at least add two numbers if one of them happens to be a negative number. In fact, we, we used to do this by this plus this number but we can add this as a negative number, right? So that's the idea. The ones con and that's uh, that's the whole idea behind two's complement. Okay. So the ones complement is, um, let's say, if a number is one zero one, right? So ones complement would be exactly the opposite of that in terms of binary. Oh, ones and zero, so it'll be zero one zero. Simple, straight, right? But uh, one's complement is sort of a, uh, not practical for adding numbers. Uh, but what we do, uh, two's complement is what's you know useful. So two's complement would be would be one's complement plus one. Okay. So uh, two's complement, let's say a number is uh, 101, then one's complement, right, is 0, 010. Zero. Two's, not the first complement, it should be just ones. Two's complement would be 0, 010 zero plus 1. And that would be 0, 1, 1. And then we use this, uh, um, if it was a negative number, we would add this to the number that we wanted to uh, add. So uh, kind of look into this a little bit, see if that makes any sense to you. If not, uh, then you know you can look into these few uh, websites. Um, chapter, uh, Zybook Chapter 4 is about branching. So if you go there, uh, it'll talk about, um, you know, like if and if statements, if this variable here is less than 1970, then do something, right? If not, then it'll do something else. So it's conditional statement that uh, allows you to branch into other parts of the code. So that's very useful. It also talks about uh, Boolean operators. So it talks about, if, you know, and, or, and not. Um, so, if we, let's see if there's a some example of that. I can, I may have screenshot here. Uh, maybe I can go to here, Zybook. 
chapter 4 is a boolean operators so this one talks about um, boolean meaning true or false so uh, here like if you want this and that to be true uh, both to be true then you use an and if only one of them to be true to be for the whole thing to be true then you use a or and if you if you want opposite of what is there then use the word not so uh, there is a little operator description that, that you can use as a uh, how to uh, figure out if the entire thing is true or false okay so uh, look through that and that should prove useful for you Uh, there is a order of, uh, oh, here's an example that I already put it on here. So if the, if the days is a variable and you want those days of, for accounting purposes or whatever to be between uh, greater than 30 but less than 90, then this is the condition that you want to use uh, to see if that is true, then you want to do something. If not, then, you know, do something else. There is a order of evaluation in terms of the operations um, always the parentheses in terms of the arithmetic and in terms of the uh, boolean so you want to be aware of uh, how uh, they are uh, evaluated in terms of this order code block uh, will be useful for you um, it kind uh, it's, it's the idea of if you have a long line then instead of just trying to use a continuation mark you can use a colon just like here to say that whatever following here uh, it would be part of this particular line but notice that it is indented right so uh, all the codes that are following this a code block indicator needs to be indented okay. uh, don't use a uh, uh, space just use a hard tab uh, and always use a consistent tab for all of the lines that are following don't mix in uh, you know, uh, spaces or whatever, uh, that it becomes really uh, hairy. Um, anyway, um, so here's one uh, interesting program. Let's see if I can show that to you. 410. Tweet uh, coder here. So, um, here is a uh, code here. If the variable to it is whatever the person put it in, um, you know, if that uh, text is LOL, then you want here is a code block, uh, print, uh, laughing out loud, and stuff like that, right? So uh, you can sort of use this uh, for your uh, programming assignment that I'm assigning today. Um, but anyway, let's say, uh, you know, the LOL or whatever. Then you click on run. It prints out, hopefully, uh, uh, LOL, LOL is laughing out loud. So if you type in, let's say, a BFN, and you say run, uh, then it will be buy for now, right? But if you say LOL like that with a lowercase, notice that it, it, it doesn't work because it's not part of this, right? So it will um, uh, it has a nice uh, catch uh, statement that says, if none of these are true, then say something because uh, it, without this, it'll just it doesn't you wouldn't know what to do, right? So this is a, a good uh, practice for you to follow. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that to you. And then for chapter five loops, uh, it talks about um, why we need a loop if you want to uh, uh, execute some set of codes, uh, you know, for uh, you know repeated number of times. Uh, and the looping mechanism of while and uh, for loop, uh, what, how they are different and stuff like that. So uh, look, look through that and, and do the uh, participation uh, activities. And uh, I think kind of doing it will help you out. Lastly, um, I'd like you to uh, write a program. Um, input, ask the user for name and four exam grades. Uh, so you need to ask them four times. And then ask for three programming assignment grades. So you need to ask three more uh, grades and, and um, uh, assign them to a particular variable. And what I'd like you to do is to figure out these things. So give four, uh, for four exams, 
they're worth 100 points, and they're worth 60% of the overall grade. Three programming grades will be worth 10 points each, and all of that put together will be worth 40% of the overall grade. And so overall grade can be calculated as a 0.6 times the average exam score, so you may want to use this as a, a variable for this guy, for the average, and you can find the average by adding four of them and dividing by four, right? And then 0.4 times the average program uh, score, and you can do the same thing for the programming assignment uh, by adding all three of them and dividing by three. Um, and then I'd like you to uh, print out the user's name, uh, average exam score, average program score, and then figure out what the grade is. If it's uh, greater than or equal to 90, give an A, and then uh, so, so on and so forth, right? Uh, try to use the two decimal point uh, points for your uh, uh, grades that you did for last week. And uh, so that's what I'm asking for. I have some screenshots here. Um, use, a, use the same iPod chart practice. Uh, here is a screenshot of what I'm asking you to do. Obviously, uh, this is not entire program. I need to modify, and there are a few things that may be useful for you. Okay, so I'm giving you everything I got uh, in terms of my even notes. Some of these may be useful for you if you want to actually use it as a code, uh, but uh, you know those are miscellaneous notes. So, <clears throat> just kind of wrapping up. This is the uh, lecture video for week number three. And um, I'm asking you to do the, uh, these assignments, textbook assignments, and uh, Zybooks uh, ch chapter 4 and 5, and then programming lab um, uh, for this week. Um, I think let me just kind of go back to the uh, content here. I think that's pretty much what I got. Let's look at number 3 here. I think that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, I have um, uh, opened up all the uh, remaining uh, weeks of the uh, term, so feel free to plan ahead and, and work at your own speed. Uh, that's pretty much it. Looking forward to receiving your assignments, and have a good week.